Welcome to 501, Principles of Management Leadership in an Organisational Context. In this video, uh, we're looking at the assessment brief for 501. Um, to understand the role of the evidence booklet and assessment brief and how to tackle and structure an assignment, there are two other screencasts available. In this one, I'd like to give you an outline of what's required in your assignments. So let's scroll down to page two and we'll see an overview of what's required for each task. So we've got a specific uh, re report that we need to write and we're given the title there. We've got two learning outcomes we're addressing and we've got eight assessment criteria. So for task one with 2,800 words approximately, we know if we divide that down into eight, that's 350 words per assessment criteria. So this means we need to be really succinct on how we're addressing it. However, this isn't all the information we get. If we carry on scrolling down in the assessment booklet, we get additional information. So on page four, we've got um, a description of the learning outcome we're addressing for the specific task. That, so that's actually above um, the more detailed information on the task. And we're also given two subheaders to group um, learning outcome one. So that's one subheader. You'll see all those assessment criteria relate to learning outcome one. And then we've got a second subheader which relates to learning criteria um, in assessment learning uh, outcome two. We've also got words highlighted so we know specifically what the focus is for each of these um, tasks. So in terms of if we go down a bit further, we're given even more information. So we need to use the subheaders. We can use tables. As I mentioned in previous videos, tables are included in the word counts and diagrams aren't. So we can use diagrams, but just as appropriate. Where appropriate, we also need to use relevant theory and we need to apply it to an organisation that we know well or we've researched. OK, so that's task one. Let's go back up to task two. So task two, we're looking at the profile of a manager who has operational or departmental responsibilities. We've got one learning outcome and three assessment criteria. So we know for our two, three, 750 words, each of these uh, assessment criteria are gonna be approximately 250 words each. So let's go down for more information. So if we scroll down on task two, we'll see if we've got anything else that will help us. So we've got a description to start off with, which is helpful. We've also got a few things that add a little more context to what we're doing. So the organisation is looking to develop a talent management programme. So what we need to do when we're profiling this individual um, is look at best practice. So the aim of the profile is to present um, knowledge, skills and behaviour to be effective in this role. So We've got some options here in terms of how we present the information. So we might do it through tables, reports and articles. So we might lay it out in quite a quirky fashion, but we know we need to hit each of these or demonstrate each of these three assessment criteria to be to meet um, the pass requirement for the assignment. Um, we can undertake independent research. Now, if we do that, what we're going to have to do um, is if we're actually um, doing interviews is fulfill the organization's CU Coventry's ethical process in terms of capturing information and doing research. It isn't an onerous process so just have a word if you're planning to do some independent research with your tutor so they can just get the thing set up in place to approve your research methodology before you start your research. Alternatively if you're just reading around the topic you don't need to get that approval. So that's um, secondary research and that's just re that's reading. Um, you're not, what you need to do, your role in this, is to focus on the most important things because we've only got 250 words for each of these three criteria. We're not going to be able to cover everything. So you're not expected to cover everything. You focus on those you feel are essential to the role. So it will be very much dependent on the organisation as well. Okay, so there's some ideas for task two. So let's have a look at the final task, task number three. So if we go back up to the overview again, so this time it's quite straightforward. We've only got one assessment criteria and we're writing a proposal about building a culture of mutual trust, respect and support with individuals and teams. So again, learning 
outcome three and one assessment criteria. So that whole assessment criteria will be 450 words. So let's go down for a bit more information on this one. So we've got a brief description of what that means, but we've also got a scenario. So for this one, if you are struggling in order to sort of give it more of a context, what you can do is you can either complete this task um, with the scenario in mind, or you can complete it with um, an organisation or a team role that you've got that you may be working on at the moment or one that you've researched or that you know well. Again, we've got the format, we can choose the best way that we want to put it together for these recommendations and think about best practice. So again, this can be done through wider reading, especially management directs, it gives a lot of examples of best practice. Um, where appropriate, use models, frameworks um, and apply them to the organisation, so apply them, apply them to show how you will build trust. Um, so you've got uh, there are quite a few different options on how you're going to approach task three. Also, if you ensure you've got sort of plenty of time before the submission date, do show a draft to your tutor because they can ensure that you're on the right tracks. And even if you've got any questions, just to make sure that you um, are heading in the right direction, please just drop them a line so they can steer you. Okay, so that's it for task uh, assessment 501.